do think the comparison to Mark Driscoll is a little wild. There's no role models. That's why, and no, Cap, there's role models. Y'all just don't want to hear from them. Andrew Tate's here because there's no role models. Nonsense. There's multiple role models. You guys just need the role models yes. to have a certain degree of lifestyle and material wealth in order to receive it. Bruce Lawn. I'm not uh -huh. offended by Andrew Tate because it's so blah. Like, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. How are you going to be offended at Andrew Tate but not at, like, Baby Keem or Lil whatever? You know what I'm saying? They're saying the same things. They're saying the One's same. Saying, Ladies! They're saying the same things. It's just a different medium. It's, it's that's a, music that's a great or point. it's podcasting. So if we know sp people are spiritually dead, is the issue becomes the format? Like you don't like the format, you don't like that he's articulate, right? Or is the issue the content? Because if the issue was the content, then you guys would be banning Lil Baby, you'd be banning Future, you'd be banning all these trash rappers that we all tolerate and celebrate in the name of quote unquote sex positivity and all this nonsense that you see all over TikTok. However, when someone is speaking it, all of a sudden it becomes an issue. I do think the comparison to Mark Driscoll is a little wild. If we're talking about who tried to uh, dominate the space uh -huh. of creating better men mm -hmm. in the faith-based community and was also celebrity-like. Mm, and masculine. And, ma and and covered masculinity and did, yeah. did men uh, advances and not retreats, right? Do Christians fail at creating positive role models that are motivate uh, male role models that yeah. are motivational? Yeah. Then I'd be like, pr probably... I think it's hard for Christians, and I asked asked this at the end because I said, "Is the aspirational cars, nice house, cool clothes essential to reach young men, regardless on if they're Christian?" Like that's a real question you got to deal with. Because listen, the brothers I know that are getting it feel a certain degree of conflict with flaunting their wealth online. Mm. So, like KB has multiple Teslas runs a multi-seven-figure business, Seven dresses cool, has a great family, has a big house, yeah. is building another house. But it'd be really weird if KB took pictures in front of his Teslas all the time. Yes. I don't think it's the flexing of things, of material things. I think it's the confidence to do whatever you want. So in a non-Christian, non-faith-based uh -huh. world... Mm -hmm. Andrew Tate having the confidence to flex these things and mm -hmm. be like, you suck, essentially, mm -hmm. attracts a certain person, hmm. right? But maybe KB having confidence in his sector as performing, mm -hmm. merch, whatever that is, I, I think that exudes the same sort of, like, success. Like, I don't think Christian men need to be doing that. But I guess my question is... But, but, but hold on. But let's, let's be frank. Christian men do do that. Yes. Except they don't brand themselves as Christians, and it does serve as a practical utility. Mm. Do you know who I'm thinking about? Yes. Who? Wait, wait, no, no, no. I don't know who you're thinking about because I don't think Ryan he... Panita. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, Ryan yeah, yeah, Panita yeah. literally posts exotic cars. Yeah. And explains if you should get a car note versus not a car note. He he, he talks about eating mm. out and spending five thousand dollars a month eating out. He flexes his lifestyle with the hope to sell his courses. And he also has a free program where he mentors men called the Wealthy Way. Ryan Panita, we just had him on the channel. If you guys aren't familiar, now I think it's effective. But is is that to motivate? Is that to motivate men, or is that to motivate people to get out of their financial situation? I think it's both. Really, I think it's both. Mm. I think I think. I think it's shallow that that is the lowest common denominator, <laughs> right? Yeah. But it works. Yes. We know, listen, like, let's not count. We Linda, know listen. a lot of Christian influencers out here that are getting it. Oh, yeah. I'm, oh, not, I'm yes. talking Christian, Christian influencers. Oh, yes. Getting to the bag. Mm -hmm. But they would never post the type of house they live in. Why? Because they would, they would catch a gang of backlash. Yes. And because they would feel conflicted about flaunting their wealth. Yes. But what the chat is saying. What the chat is saying. Is men don't have role models. Mm. I'm saying men don't have role models because it's not cool to look at Ruslan who's been married almost 15 years with my wife for 19 years. Right? Like, what am I going to flex? If I get a Tesla, when I get a Tesla, my next car will be a Tesla. Music video immediately. Sure. But when I get a Tesla, when I when we buy when I buy a house, yep. when I buy a house and I pay off the house, if we made vlogs around this sort of stuff, it would instantly alienate me to a huge chunk of my audience that would feel like it's immodest. 
However, it may open me up to men that need to see the aspirational side to get motivated and say, oh, that that's proof of concept. So it's like marketing versus morality. I see Apology Center. He said flex the family. The thing with the family is that it becomes a confidential boundaries issue. Yeah. Like, I don't want to have my wife in these things. And then some weirdo walks up to her when she's grocery shopping with Zoe at freaking Sprouts and wants to start. Like, you, some of y'all don't know how weird it could get being in public. So that's the issue with, with flexing the family is like, if I'm flexing the family, like, that's weird. But I, I mean... Well, I think I think you do. I actually think you do flex in a way that is aspirational to that crowd in a very modest. I think you actually do find that balance because sometimes you go, I don't mean to flex, but we're doing well. Multiple six figures the last couple of years. Yeah. And, and then you'll mention married 27 years. I'm just Not kidding. I know. <laughs> but what I'm saying is I think uh, you don't show it, but there's still a level of like of like if if men need that aspirational aspect which i think it helps like understanding the context of someone else's success mm -hmm. can totally help but i think it doesn't have to be pictures of bugattis bugattis, bugattis. Teslas. yeah I, I would also never take a picture in front of my prius because it's a prius no no no. <laughs> I'm, but that's what i'm saying it's a prius Is, but god's blessed me with a prius yes i used to drive an 06 saturn i remember with the with the I license plate I drive, crooked. I, I drive a 06 Prius. Yes. A, a license plate crooked and the uh, headlight pulled out. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I remember. But I don't feel like, I don't feel any need to be like, wow, man, God's blessed me with this car. Even no, though no, I no. feel very blessed with the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying as a, as a, you understand I'm saying as a utility. As right? a utility as to inspire As a utility other. to inspire and attract men that actually need it, right? Like, I think Ryan Panita does a good job. Some of you guys might think that's crazy, but I think he does a good job. So do you think it's helpful? That's a healthy utility? I think it can be. I think okay. it's all about the heart. That's I think right. it's all about the heart. Yeah. Like, let's be honest. That's what everybody's trying to figure out. Everybody's like, there's no role models. That's why. And no, Cap, there's role models. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't want to hear from them. Andrew Tate's here because there's no role models. Nonsense. There's multiple role models. Mike Winger's your role model. Alan Parr is your role model. John McRae is your role model. There's models. You guys just need the role models to have a certain degree of bravado, yes. to have a certain degree of lifestyle and material wealth, to have a certain degree of chip on my shoulder in order for not all of you, but many of you to receive it. And it can be in conflict when someone is a follower of Jesus. Think about, I was talking to Young Don the other day. Shout out to Young Don. He felt conflicted about gunshot drops, right? So we got our little drops and we, we were joking about who has the better drop board. <laughs> By the way, I think Young Don has a better drop board. But he said he felt conflicted and had to uh, scale down his gunshot because it's like too much bravado. He said it's like too violent. It's too violent. It's too much bravado. We could say there's no good, there's actually a ton of great role models out here. Do people want to hear from them? But what about the bravado of... Tate being a world champion kickboxer mm -hmm. and him being super confident and being like, you need to be able to defend your family. Da, sure, da, da. Sure, 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 sure. But then when you go into church, it, it's like, it's all scholars. Okay, that's a different that's a different conversation. That, I think, is the feminization of the church. I okay. think this is where I would actually agree with Rolo. You guys Rolo. think I'm stupid. I'm not stupid, <laughs> right? guys. This I, is where I, I, I would, would agree that. with Rolo. Okay. I would agree with Rolo. There's a feminization of church. There's a feminization of church scenery, men, and then the guys who who have some bravado tend to then be enthralled in scandals. Oof. And that bring it back to Mark Driscoll, right? <sighs> Mark Driscoll was the archetype for a lot of men for a long time. So is the Oh wow. So do does that extra layer of bravado of uh confidence with that more aggressive type of male archetype yeah. end up attracting women in a scenario where you get no, 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 in scan no, no. like what, no, 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 no. what gets those people in scandals? The bravado attracts other men. The bravado attracts other men. When you attract men, the the logic is women will follow. <laughs> right? Yeah. Get the men in church, the women will come to church. Okay. That's the logic. With Driscoll, it was that he attracted a lot of men who didn't have fathers, became their father, and wasn't really fathered himself and didn't really know how to navigate that. So then there became a bunch of kind of reckless behavior, so on and so forth. Gotcha. But Driscoll was that guy. Driscoll was the manly man, yell from the pulpit, talk about MMA, how he'll punch you in the face. Like he was that guy 12 years ago. This so, is how guys like Hafiz came to got got mm. said this is this is the era that a lot of us came up in where it wasn't 
I got to choose my masculinity or choose Jesus. No, no, no. They're one and the same because we have the Driscoll. Unfortunately, when you attract that many men and you aren't really capable yet to lead men, because remember, say what you want about Andrew Smith. He's in his mid-30s when he got popping. Driscoll got popping in his early 30s. Yeah. Furtick got popping in his early 30s. These are young guys, relatively speaking. I think you attract men. You don't have your stuff figured out. And then you may have some narcissistic tendencies. You may have some, you know what I mean, fill in the blank. And then you become a quote unquote abuser, which is how much of that is like overt abuse versus <laughs> like I dropped the ball and I didn't lead you the way I should have. It's probably a combination of both with Driscoll if you're listening to the rise and fall of Mars Hill. Yeah. And so is there a level of passivity that is actually significantly more Christ like? Or, or is, is there a level, or can you have that bravado without getting caught up in, in the cult of personality, without getting caught up in the attention, I guess? I think you have to have both. I think I think it's very it's very hard to read Paul. It's very hard to read Peter and not sense some bravado. Yeah. <laughs> like let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. Like it's very hard to read these guys and be like, oh yeah, they were like, you know, they were Ned Flanders. Yeah. These guys weren't Ned Flanders, right? Like these were masculine men. So I don't know. I don't know. But I think with 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 respect to all this stuff with with men and leadership and all that kind of stuff, I I think it's uh I don't think it's well, there's no male leaders, so Andrew Tate rose up. No, fam. Oh, yeah, no, Cut it ridiculous. out. There's that's tons ridiculous. of leaders. There's tons of leaders. I mean, even if you want to go down that road, Hafiz does the same stuff. Hafiz flexes an aspirational lifestyle. Yeah, and I think I think maybe I wasn't bothered by Andrew Tate. I feel like people can be drink too much of the Kool-Aid. You know, I, I don't know why you don't just watch Andrew Tate as a Christian and be like, yeah, I'll get fit. I'll learn to I'll learn to box. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I feel like you can just be casual with it, mm -hmm. but I think some some people seem to be very offended or very on board. And it's and like I don't think you should be either he, or just regular the, person. The issue is people don't know where the line is between hyperbole of content and this fool is serious. Yes. Kevin Samuels was entertaining people. Oh yeah, your average at best was entertainment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally right. Was. He what? He doesn't. It, it's all. It's not all literal. And we have an issue in in Western society, and specifically in America, where you guys can't decipher when someone right like is being entertainer and when someone's being literal, especially on a platform that, that that's associated with self help and podcasts and da da da. da. So I think it just it, it's hard for the brain to decipher like, oh no, he's entertaining right now. He doesn't. He doesn't really mean this in his day-to-day -day life. Yeah. He's saying stuff to cut through so that he'll be noticed, so that he, you know, and again, and there's some pragmatism in there of like, what is it, the ends justify the means? That's, mm -hmm. There's some of that there. But I think it's, it's, it's a tough thing to ignore and to say, yeah, this is just all literal. I don't think any of these guys are all literal, but they're taking literally when they're not. They're, they're being, Tate is playing a character in my opinion. Yes. Shout out to Baptist for the super chat. He said, masculinity is impossible to ignore in scripture. It's not that Christianity feminizes men. It's a fear of pushing that into mainstream faith. I agree with you, my brother. Thank you for the super chat. So I think this is an interesting conversation. I think deplatforming folks, in my opinion, is trash. Like, unless someone's actually doing things that are going to cause physical harm to people, um, just because you don't like somebody's ideology or paradigm, I think it's trash to be like deplatform. And that's what that's kind of what I was asking the other day on that other video. Yeah. I was like, I don't understand exactly fully what got him deplatformed. Um, I don't think that I needed Bugattis and cars and all that kind of stuff. I, I feel like, but I also feel like I matured low key earlier. But I also grew up on rap music, and if anybody knows anything about rap music, it's extremely aspirational. I mean, look at the size of the chains, right? Like, it's extremely aspirational. It's extremely, I'm flexing so that uh, I, I I could show you that I made it, and it is that, right? So, But when that becomes your, your sole pursuit is materialism, women, cars, money, I think that's a very shallow pursuit. But that seems to be what riles people in. You know what I mean? And I think that's, uh, that, that's kind of weak to me. That's kind of trash to me. So... And it said that Simeon blessed God.